Hi everyone, it's Friday, November 8th. This is Liam McMahon, the Daily Moving Average Video with Global FX Club. Thank you very much for joining me. <coughs> um, a couple things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the news event, uh, Non-Farm Payrolls, which was released today. We're going to talk about what that did to currencies and equities, and then we're going to talk about what we can expect for next week. So, please take a moment to read over the risk disclaimer, which should now be on your screen, and then we'll get started. Okay, so, uh, news today. Uh, first, uh, in less important news, French industrial production down half a percent versus expectations of up half a percent. Uh, France was also had their uh, debt rating downgraded by S&P. Uh, they're down to AA from AA+. Plus. Um, concerns about their general inability to uh, regulate government spending and uh, the sort of a uh, popular outcry against the higher tax rates by the new government. Um, so that happened in the morning. Euro dipped a little bit, but everyone was pretty focused on NFPs. Uh, so non-farm payrolls were expected to come in very weak at 121. Um, government shutdown, etc., etc. But we actually printed 204. All right, very strong print. Um, strongest that we've had in actually quite some time. Uh, strongest since March. All right of this year. Um, and the previous number was upped from 148 to 163, so slightly better news on that front. Unemployment rate remained steady, at, or well, actually ticked up to 7.3% as expected. Uh, Canadian employment numbers also released uh, their unemployment num uh, percentage ticked down to 6.9, uh, stayed at 6.9 versus 7.0 expected. Um, and uh, 13.2 thousand jobs added versus 12.7 thousand jobs. So slightly better numbers out of Canada, significantly better numbers out of the US. As a result, okay, this is Euro dollar. You can see this was the NFP sell off here. All right, we sold off to a low of 133.17. We're about 40 pips off those lows right now. Pound dollar, okay, similar story, dip down. Uh, to a low of about 159.60, um, or about 40 pips of those lows as well. Um, dollar yen, okay, spiked higher, uh, touched a high of 99.20. Um, we're only about 20 pips off those highs. Uh, still now, this pair looks extraordinarily choppy. We'll have to take a little bit of a closer look um, on a higher time frame chart. We'll get a better idea of that. Uh, the pairs that suffered the most today our Aussie dollar down eight tenths of a percent all right Aussie dollar looks like a fairly significant breakout maybe in the works for next week that's something what we'll have to keep an eye on for uh, and then Kiwis down uh, 0 0.85 percent this head and shoulder potential head and shoulders I've been watching played out beautifully uh, 84 for the most part held we're down to about 82 51 150 pips lower and about 50 pips off of the significant resistance level sorry significant support level that is 82 that would be the neckline of this head and shoulders so that is something that you want to uh keep your eye on if we do manage to break below 82 it could herald a period of significant kiwi dollar weakness so some other things that uh we should look at here uh aussie and kiwi are down uh yet um, equity is trading very strongly today, up 0.89% well, now. Uh, S&P has gained 15 points. Uh, we basically held that 100 period EMA here on the 4-hour chart very nicely. Um, we broke back above this line here. Uh, major resistance remains at the 1773 double top potential, uh, but we broke... That would have been the neckline of a double top. We broke and closed below it, but couldn't hold it. So that 1775 area may actually be a challenge pretty early next week. Again, the weekly chart. All right. Um, you can see that the market's thinking, trying maybe to get something going to the downside, but just has not been able to yet. Uh, this would have been a very significant candle close if we could have closed down here uh, without today's rally. Uh, that would have marked a very nice two-day um, candlestick reversal pattern, but it was not to be. Best case we're looking for is back-to-back -back dojis. That's if we get a late-day sell-off. Got about two hours left in uh, normal trading for equity markets. Um, so equities continue to look bullish. Currencies, though, for the most part, continue to look bearish. Pound Aussie higher on the day, up by two-tenths of a percent. 
Pound Kiwi up by two tenths of a percent. Euro Kiwi up by four tenths of a percent. Pound Kiwi probably about two tenths. Oh, sorry. Pound Aussie was the one I'm missing. That's up by about two tenths of a percent as well. No, I'm missing Euro Aussie. There we go. Sorry. Euro Aussie up by, I'm going to guess, yeah, two tenths of a percent. Stunner. So, uh, those pairs tend to rally in periods of risk off, fall in periods of risk on. We have healthy risk on today, in term, at least in terms of general uh, equity markets. But we saw the currencies move higher, so that's an interesting divergence that we have going on. Um, obviously, the dollar strength is somewhat explained by... Uh, the strong NFPs, um, but I'm a little bit interested to see that equities have done so well today after those strong numbers, uh, and after yields jumped too. So the market's clearly thinking taper, yet uh, equities are rallying. So that is an interesting divergence that we'll have to pay very close attention to next week. All right, so pairs to look at next week. Obviously, Euro Aussie. All right, uh, this trend line held again. Very nice, um, significant level now. Uh, so below 140.30. All right, could be a significant move to the downside. Pound Kiwi finally got a four-hour close around above this uh, really sloppy descending flag type thing. Um, we held that 618% FIB on a closing basis. Again, I am expecting a move up towards this 197 FIB extension, 100% FIB extension. Sorry, 198. Uh, if not higher, I do think that this pair could easily regain the two-handle uh, by the end of the by the end of November, beginning of December. Aussie Cat is another one to watch. Okay, um, you know if you watch my videos regularly, at the start of this week I was bullish Aussie Cat. Uh, we got this bounce, uh, and now the bounce could not be sustained. We did not manage to continue in the channel. We have now broken out of the channel. We briefly pushed below this 200 period EMA here on the four hour chart. Uh, couldn't hold below it yet, but not if you zoom in a little bit. Not an overly convincing move if we've sort of retested it now. Um, this pair looks fairly bearish to me, uh, and with the strong Canadian PMI data on Thursday and the strong Canadian employment data on Friday, uh, I am somewhat tempering my bearish Canadian outlook, uh, and I think we could see this pair correct a little bit to the downside, I think uh, 96, 96.50 or so for reasonable targets there. I already said Kiwi Watch 82, Euro, I don't have anything on the Euro. All right, the sell level was here. I mentioned that 618% FIB horizontal level worked out perfectly if you held it through NFPs. Um, I guess that's still a significant level, <coughs> but the way it's looking right now, I think more information is needed. Uh, it looks just a little bit choppy down there. Pound dollar honestly still looks pretty good to me. Um, it looks like we're not going to manage to put a four hour close in below this trend line. At least not today. Not a four-hour close below the 6.8% FIB either. This spike down looks to be kind of an aberration. Uh, a move up towards 161 wouldn't be surprising. 162 either. Um, the other alternative, of course, would be an opportunity. If we do sell off, would be to buy at 159, trying to play this range holding. Uh, but if we break 159, that's the real move. Uh, that would open a move down towards about 155. So watch 59 very closely next week. Uh, the most important pairs to keep an eye on next week will probably be the yen pairs. Okay, you can see dollar yen here. All right, if depending on the close, trying to push above the first potential triangle. Um, second one sits at about 99.70. After yesterday's significant sell-off, euro yen looks primed for shorts. That 100-day held. All right, this is playing out very nicely. Um, looking for a retest just a bit higher or really more accurately at the start of next week. I don't want to open it now with four hour, three hours left in the day. Um, but definitely watching um, Euro Yen next week. Pound Yen as well is going to maybe get back up towards its resistance level. All right, CAD Yen uh, still stuck within its triangle. All right. Um, so these are the pairs to keep an eye on. The two clearest to me are uh, Euro Yen and Dollar Yen. Those are the two I'd be keeping an eye on. Um, daily close dependence on Dollar Yen, but Euro Yen looks prime for a short next week. All right, so that's what I got for you. Um, good luck. You know, Enjoy your weekend, uh, and I look forward to talking to you on Sunday.